Today, we craft by bringing together two retailers that offer some of the most affordable crafting supplies. Every DIY in this video is going to cost you just a few dollars to make and a few minutes of your time. Many will make a great gift for Mother's Day, a birthday, and even selling in your retail booth. The main products I'm using in this first one is a keepsake box made from natural wood from Timu and a pack of napkins that I recently picked up at Dollar Tree. I'm starting by removing the screws that attach the hardware to the bottom piece of this box. I laid the napkin down first, then my parchment paper that's going to allow me to slide easily over the napkin without tearing it. And I have my iron set to the cotton setting and there's no water in the iron. We're just going to swipe over the design. You don't have to hold it in place for any amount of time. It is really just heating up that glue and making everything stay in place. I want to use Mod Podge to cover the bottom of the box. I recently bought this blue pack Dollar Tree of napkin. wood butterfly cutouts the sides from the and Dollar the bottom Tree. Of there this were two or three of the different box sizes we'll inside. Coat of I'm going to use two different and I'll set sizes. Aside to dry repeat for the ironing or two process for the, the napkin, napkin ready. To cover both of them. I pulled and those two plies and apart them using just the top the bottom side. An element of surprise is always a nice touch. I'm going to add a rub on transfer of a butterfly or two to the inside of this lid as just a little welcome or a little smile for the person who ends up opening it. This video is not in any way sponsored, but I will try to give you the prices that I paid for the products at the time that I bought them, and I'll give you my honest opinion about the quality of the products as I'm using them. This natural wood keepsake box cost about $4.38 when I purchased it about a month ago. The hardware is really good quality. The latch opens and closes with ease. The wood is nice and smooth and didn't require any sanding at all. This is definitely a product I'd buy again. This next one couldn't be any easier. I'm using a hexagon shaped mirror from the Dollar Tree and some ribbon from Timu. But I'm gonna just use some hot glue and start wrapping this around the edges of the mirror. This fringe, again, very good quality. It has a string that holds the ends together. And once you have it attached, you'll be able to pull that string apart and reveal a really nice structure to your fringe. I paid $2.28 for a 16 foot roll of this fringe. To add a little contrast, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time with pearl and rhinestone trim from Timu. This was 35 inches, so you don't get a whole lot with this, but it's only $1.48. It's kind of a plastic material, and then it has those tiny faux rhinestones on it. Absolutely beautiful. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already so that you can be sure to be notified and come back and see every video that I post. Be sure to check the description box below for my email address that you can use to make video suggestions or just suggestions in general. I've also linked in the description ways that you can support the channel if you would like to.
Here's our mirror completed. This could be used on the bathroom counter to put skincare products on, or you can hang it on the wall like I intend to do. If you are enjoying this video, go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and you'll be able to come back and see more unique DIYs just like these. This next one turns out so beautiful. I wish I'd bought more of these little wood trays from the Dollar Tree. I guess they're kind of like trinket trays. You can turn them into almost anything that you would like. I'm gonna use some heat transfers from Timu to decorate these. And when you see the outcome, you will agree that this is definitely something you can gift or sell. I'm going to use the heat transfers with the flowers that you see here, but I just wanted to show you these woodland transfers that I intend to use in a future woodland video. So stick around for that one. I'm going to start by staining these wood pieces with gel stain. This stuff costs about $1.99 at Hobby Lobby. And Dollar Tree wood products take this stain beautifully. I'll have three of these four trays colored with this gel stain, and then I'm going to paint one of them with a white acrylic paint. And then we're going to And here's what they look like completed. I love the white one. I almost wish I would have done more of these in white. But look how beautiful even the gel stained pieces are. The person receiving this as a gift would adore this from you. And each one costs just $2 to make. These paper packs from Timu cost around $3 to $5 depending on the size of the pack that you get. And honestly, I have never seen more beautiful paper. I wish that some of these smaller sheets would be offered in larger, but outside of that, I have zero complaints. They apply beautifully as a deco page medium, and the color saturation is like nothing else. I'm rounding the edges on a couple of sheets of this paper to make sure that it fits my metal jar perfectly, and then I'll mod podge it down to the surface. You'll see me here in a minute painting on some white and then some antiquing wax around the edges of the jar before I apply the paper. I think the perfect addition for around the top or the lid of the jar is this metal ribbon from Dollar Tree. I have two different kinds and I'm going to put one kind on each lid. And then I'll wrap a small piece of twine and add a bow to the top. I cut two small pieces of felt from a larger sheet that I picked up at Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue them onto the back of the jars to make a little pocket.
Here I have two bundles of flowers that came from Timu. These bundles are usually two to three dollars depending on what you get. I have to say that most of these flower bundles that I received from Timu look fairly real. The color saturation is gorgeous and aside from having to kind of frill and fluff them a little bit, they're perfect. I don't know that I've received a single piece of floral anything from Timu that I wasn't crazy about. After cutting the stems down and putting them in the pocket, this is what the jars look like complete. The beauty of the felt pocket is that in the fall, I can pull these flowers out and put something more appropriate for the season. For this next one, I'm using a 5x5 shadow box from Dollar Tree and one piece of paper that came in this beautiful pack of images that has gold gilding on it. If, like me, you love gold in your projects, you will absolutely love this paper. It's just a hint of gold and it really makes the image pop. There's just a small amount of a light blue color in this image, the bird, and just a few other little patches of blue going to try to match up with a paint color that's very similar and paint the inside of the shadow box. I'm going to use Mod Podge to attach the paper to the inside of the box. The outside gets a coat of green paint and then I use a little bit of white with the same sponge brush that had the blue on it and start to kind of dry brush the white throughout the green and it adds just small hints of the blue as well. I thought I was recording when I added this chiffon ribbon from Timo around the box. The ribbon is the same width as the box, so I cinched it in a few different areas so it wouldn't cover all of the sides. I created a tail with some of that remaining ribbon, added florals, added a few strips of self-adhesive pearls from the Dollar Tree, And to finish it, I'm adding a D-ring to the back with some hot glue. This is the completed look. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this one. I think it's pretty. I think it has a lot of frill and it might be better for a teenager's room than an adult, but we'll see. We'll see where it ends up. I picked up two of these white vases from Dollar Tree. They do have different shapes and sizes. I think there was a variety of four or six different types. And these are the two that I like the most. I'm going to be combining it with clay cutouts from molds that I bought at Timu. Each one cost under $2 at the time, and I think that, again, they stay right around that same price point. I'm popping the flowers out of the molds, and I'm going to glue them onto the surface of the vase using Dollar Tree wood glue. 
and I'll set this aside for about 15 minutes for the glue to start drying. And coming back, I have a few different colors along with white that I'm going to use to paint these two vases. When I am all done with the painting, I set this project aside for about 24 hours to dry. And the next day, finish it off with a top coat of clear gloss spray paint. This high gloss top coat will not only seal the product and protect it, but gives it a beautiful enamel appearance. If you're still watching, thank you so much for still being here. I really appreciate the time that you set aside to spend with me today. It really means a lot when you hang out, comment, and share the video with your friends. It lets me know that I'm doing something right over here. Here I'm using a 4x6 photo frame from the Dollar Tree, a piece of paper that came in a larger pack from Timu, as well as a few pressed flowers that came also in a larger pack. It may be a little difficult to see here, but there's actually a scene on this paper of a river with trees in the background and a man fishing. And what I hope to do with this project is to create a foreground as though somebody, maybe a small child, is watching the man fish by looking through the flowers in a wild flower field. The entire pack of paper cost around $3.26 and the pressed flowers were about the same. I would say that they were under $4 and pricing on this one stays consistent as well. This one is super quick and easy. I'm just going to turn the frame upside down, place a few of these dried pressed flowers in a way that makes me happy and then put this paper on as a background. There's my little chaperone Maisie, patiently waiting for me to stop crafting so she can get her nightly cuddle session. She is really the perfect companion. It's hard to believe that she was a stray, sleeping in a cardboard box behind my daughter's job before we took her in. A lot of you ask questions about Maisie and if you would like a short video on her history and how we brought her in let me know because I can easily create something for you. And that's all there is to it. This project is done. We've made it to the final project. This is by far the easiest but the cutest of probably all of them. I picked up an 8x10 photo frame from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the back and the glass. I'm going to remove the kickstand to this frame but this part is not necessary. If this is something that you want to recreate and have sitting on a shelf, then by all means you can keep it intact. Using my glue stick, I'm attaching a white piece of medium weight paper to cover the inside portion of the backing, and this will become our workspace. I'm going to apply this absolutely adorable bird heat transfer 
to that white piece of paper using the same techniques we've used in previous DIYs. When I was doing this, I could feel those D rings in the back and it seemed like the heat transfer didn't want to lay down in those areas. So all I'm doing here is removing those from the back so I can smooth things out. The biggest thing to remember when applying a heat transfer is to wait about 15 seconds after you're done ironing for the project to cool off before you pull back the protective film. I put everything back together in the frame minus the glass and on the back I'm using a sharpie to color in those areas where the paper ripped and you can see brown. And finally I'll use E6000 to attach a saw tooth hanger to the back of this picture and she's ready to hang up. When I ordered this heat transfer from Timu, I knew it was cute, but I didn't know just how cute it was until I had it in person. This transfer stuck to the paper better than any other transfer I've ever used. The colors are vibrant and it's definitely something that I would purchase again. My channel is sprinkled with DIYs that have Dollar Tree and Timu products in them. And this is the first time that I've created a video dedicated to it. I'll link the video to these DIYs down below and I'll keep creating these if you let me know that this is the type of content you want to see. It's really all about what you want. Please let me know if you would enjoy more videos just like this one. If you're in the mood for more crafting, check out this video next. Until next time, don't forget to craft what you love.